The time has come for some more Divide and Conquer. And this time we're jumping in as Dol Guldur. And perhaps with a twist as well. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that later in the video. So we're going in as usual. Very hard, very hard. Nothing really new here. I've never played a campaign on Dol Guldur. So this is gonna be a nice thing to do. Hopefully we're gonna end up doing well on the campaign map. I really do hope so. It's been a while since I last played Divide and Conquer, so I might do some mistakes here and there. Just help me on the journey, <laughs> like always. I know that you always do, so I'm really thankful for that. And there we go. Let's just jump into the campaign, shall we? Let's go. And here we are. The standard message that you have all seen so many times before. If you haven't seen this one, feel free to have a read. I'm going to scroll it down for you. There we go. Feel free to read that one. Shadow of Mirkwood. We are Dol Guldur, of course. Feel free to have a little read here as well. I'm going to scroll it down for you. There we go. Wonderful. Alliance announced. Gundabad and Dol Guldur. Alliance announced Gundabad and Angmar, Gundabad and Moria, and Gundabad and Anduin Vale are at war with each other. There we go. Welcome to the campaign map. We own only Dol Guldur. Nothing else than that. We have this rebel region here close by that we're likely going to try and claim instantly. But other than that, we are really weak in the start. We are. End. I also want to say this instantly in this one. The plan that I'm having, and I want you guys to decide, I can play whatever way. I can play normal Dol Guldur, or I can play with Mordor being console command destroyed in the next episode after you guys have voted or uh, told me what you want, which path you want me to take. So we can play normally. Just go ahead uh, with uh, a powerful ally here with Mordor. Or we can console command destroy Mordor and have some severe issues in the south. Because Gondor is likely going to be a powerhouse if we destroy Mordor. Likely gonna try and climb up all the way here and maybe fight us as well. So that is the plan. Just make it harder or play normal. That's it. One thing to note though is that Mordor is not going to be destroyed as a faction. They're still gonna be alive, their armies are still gonna be alive, uh, but they're gonna be incapable of doing anything offensively, so they're not gonna be able to do anything. They're not gonna take any more settlements, they're just gonna stand still with their armies inside of Mordor until Gondor takes all of the territory and destroys all of the armies. They're never gonna be destroyed, uh, so we won't get the Nazgul's. The Witch King of Angmar, all of those Nazgul's, we are not going to receive them. So there is no benefit for, for me by destroying Mordor. Absolutely no benefit at all. No Nazgul's, no nothing. Only more difficult. That's the only thing we get from doing that. But maybe a little bit more fun as well in the campaign with some more challenges. With a powerful Gondor coming up from the south. I think it would be quite fun to do that. But... I can play normal Dol Guldur as well. I think that would be equally fun. So, let me hear your voices in the comment section. Which path do you want me to take? There we go. It's just that I wanted to know. And so, let's just type in the comments what kind of path I should take. Let's not talk about that anymore. I leave it up to you guys. Dol Guldur. Let's take a look at the financial situation here. Um, at the moment, we are earning uh, quite a bit of money. We have a pretty solid King's Percy. I think they have done that because of the fact that we only start with one settlement. Taxes, 610. Farming, 136. Uh, we are earning money, but we are likely not gonna, going to earn money soon. Because I'm going to group my forces together into one solid army. Going to try and take Achnodion and then try and move in here. Take this castle that should be located somewhere around there. I want to try and wipe Lothlorien out of the game as fast as possible. And also, I don't plan to run away from the Doomstack. I really want to fight it. Uh, I think it would be a lot more fun if we did that. To have one huge clash with Lothlorien with their Doomstack. 
as well. I'm not sure. I think their Doomstack spawns when they have two settlements left. I think it is like that. Or maybe one. Doesn't matter. We are going to fight the Doomstack. And try and... We cannot destroy Lothlorien until we have destroyed the Doomstack. I think that's going to add a little bit of extra challenge to everything. So we're going to try and do, the, do it that way. But we are going to try and... Go Berserk on Lothlorien in the beginning, try and wipe them out instantly, as fast as possible. That is the plan. And in terms of starting custom generals, we have Agladakor, the Disciple, of course. Feel free to read this rather long story. Scrolling it down. These stories are pretty, pretty badass. I think Gallo did write a few of them. Not every one of the stories, but a few I think he did the writing for. There we go, Aglaracor, really powerful guy here. Five command stars, five in fear. Loyalty is really high, acumen is high as well. Nazgul's ring, Nazgul sword, Nazgul black robes. Look at that, three extra hit points, that's pretty good. And the traits are really powerful as well, let's take a look. Aglaracor, the disciple, was an unfaithful Numenorian who worked hard to spread chaos and misinformation in Numenor in service to Sauron. Aglaracor worshipped Sauron and was given a ring for his devotion. Look at that. Look at the stats he's gaining from this. It's insane. <laughs> really good. And these Nazgul's has insane amounts of hit points. Special ability, of course, as well, that we can use. Really good. And they will respawn as well when they die. If they die in battle, they are going to return to you later. So we can use them as tanks for us. It doesn't really matter if they die because they will respawn. Let's take a look. Aglaracor comes equipped with the Castellans of Dol Guldur. Really solid unit. 11 attack, 27 defense, 0 upkeep. They don't cost anything for us. We don't pay a single cent to feel them on on the battlefield. So a really powerful unit, especially in the early game. Um, in the later stages of the game when we fight powerful human nations and maybe other elves and dwarves, these guys are getting outmatched. But for now, they are really powerful. They can crush mid-tier elves pretty easily. So really make use of the Castellans of Tol Guldur. Really a powerful unit. And Chieftain Lagoren. Of course, Lagoren of the Neck. Read through this as well. Scrolling it down. There we go. Glorious. There we go. And Lagoren comes equipped with the Castlands as well. So, once again, a mighty, mighty Nazgul unit. Lagoren of the Neck was a half-blooded Numenorian who lived in the colonies of what could be Gon what would be Gondor. He was tricked into accepting a ring by Sauron who came to him in disguise. Lagoran learned of the treachery too late and he fell to Sauron's power. Sad fate for Lagoran of the Neck. But it doesn't end there, of course. We have Camul the Easterling as well. And uh, he's a mighty, mighty guy. Let's just take a look at him quickly. Camul the Easterling. Despite his far-reaching infamy and long ties to Sauron's ventures in Southern Mirkwood, very little is known of Camul. Indeed, even his, even his well-known epithet gives no clue as to his ancestry or past deeds. Was he a man of ruin, or perhaps further east, was he taken in by the Eastlings at a young age, or did he, as an outsider, rise through their ranks to lead them? Whilst his past is shrouded in mystery, his military prowess is not. Camul is a horse master. He possesses a control over the beasts that rivals the lords of Rohan and Kand. This has given rise to the belief that he must be a descendant of the Northmen, for surely none but them can tame and master horses the way Camul does. Yeah, Camul the Easterling, for sure our most powerful commander, and he is our faction leader as well. So, yeah. Really good guy. And he comes equipped with Camul's Shadow Knight. And the value of this unit, even though we only have the one, is incredible. It's absolutely bonkers how valuable the Camul Shadow Knights are for us. Remember, we're facing Lothlorien, Woodland Realm. 
un uh, factions with insanely powerful archers. And look at that charge, 11, 12 and 29. These are the best thing you have against the elves. They can crush the, those archers with one charge. So we need to make good use out of Kamul because he is our most valuable general, Bonon. Absolutely, he's by far the best one we have. And let's get, get a watchtower here. Why not? Let's try and watchtower up our entire region, the one region that we do have. Let's just take a look at this guy as well because we have another guy here. Ulairon. A man of Melko. He also has a special ability, Serpent Alexi. And he comes equipped with Camul's Shadow Rangers, a really good unit that can actually do pretty well against the early tier 11 archers. These are actually better. They have a missile attack of 6, defense of 12, and attack of 8, but the range is far better than the starting 11 archers. They have the same missile attack as the starting 11 archers, but these guys have a better range. So I value these guys more than the starting elves for sure. Really good unit, and we're going to try and use him effectively in this game, of course. Look at the, the model there. He looks really cool with the silver. Uh, absolutely glorious unit right there. We are going to take Ulairon along with the Camul Shadow Rangers and send them towards the front lines. We don't want to, to have him here. We want him to be over here. Uh, we want to maybe use him as well against uh, Lothlorien when we fight them. Sadly, we're not going to go after these rebel regions in the beginning. We are going to try and claim them later, but I'm going to focus everything I have in the west. Nothing in the east in the start. Only the western theater against Lothlorien is going to be the primary focus here. So, there we go. Let's get some towers. Uh, these orcs, why don't you move back to Dol Guldur for now? I'm going to try and move to the border here with Aglara Corps and try and get some vision here. Perhaps if we stand over there. There we go. Fully visionized over there. You move towards Dol Guldur, please. Lagren off the neck. I want you to do the same. Get these guys back home. And move to the border there. There we go. Good. Perfect. Kamul. Is there any place more we need to watch tower up? I think we have watched tower up the entirety of the Dol, Dol Guldur um, region. Go back to Dol Guldur for a turn. We do not want to take Achnorion in the first turn. We're going to try and hope that we get a mission to take it. Because then we might receive uh, some cash or we could receive some decent troops. So I really want to try and wait at least one or maybe two turns before we strike here because I really want to try and get the reward that we can get from taking it. Uh, so that is the plan there. And at Dol Guldur, I'm thinking we might actually want to try and get the mines instantly while we have the cash. Uh, the mines are not the best, but it's an added bonus of 210 gold coins per turn, so it's actually going to stack up pretty fast. We are going to go for the mines. Uh, instantly and after the mines we're gonna start getting the building grounds and those kinds of buildings the mines first um, Yes, let's take a look at the list as well with the agents. We have one spy No diplomat send the spy over to Lothlorien lands scout out their regions and Give me a diplomat. We're also going to queue up the marauders the wargs uh, the maulers and the javelins I would like to have as well. Other than that, we're not going to do anything more in this turn. Let's end the first turn of the Dol Guldur campaign. Uh, the day after this episode has been released, I also have another campaign in the works. Something more is on the way. Not just Dol Guldur. So I'm going to try and play two campaigns at the same time on the channel. Which was a long time ago. It was a long time ago since I did that. But I want to do it. It's also a campaign on uh, the Medieval 2 game. But it's another kind of mod. Um, and I hope you guys will enjoy that. Because I have actually already recorded uh, the first episode of that campaign. And... I'm super duper excited for that campaign as well. I really am. It looks like it's going to be a really fun one. And I can't wait 
to show you what it is. There we go. We did get the mission. New mission, Achnorion. You will receive a reward of 2,000 gold coins. Bloody perfect. We're going to need those extra gold coins for sure. Good mission there. Perfect. Much better than getting the units in this early stages. Absolutely. Um, we are nowhere near anyone here, so... It's going to take some time. We are actually population 16. So, I, I mean, Dol Guldur has a fairly high population. Uh, but we're nowhere near to being the top dogs here for sure. No, absolutely not. Faction announcements. Uh, Chieftain Lagoren, Spider Ring and Bodyguard Valor. Plus 4 to Bodyguard Size. Okay, okay. It's not going to matter any at all though, so... But it's a cool thing. Relic Sword for Shift and Lagrin as well. Okay. Recruitment Report, Scouts and the Maulers. And we have the Diplomat. Uh, we, of course, are bordering Anduin Vale. They're really close to us. Uh, if we can, I would like to try and peace out with them. Because I do believe we start... We are, we are at war with them. Let's take a look. We are at war with Casa Dum, Anduin Vale, Woodland Realm and the Realm of Lothlorien. And Lothlorien is the first target for us. Um, if we can peace out with Anduin Whale, I'm going to try and do that. I'm not sure they're going to accept it. We, we're going to try and see what happens. Uh, actually, we're going to need a watchtower there as well. Aglara Core, move back into position. Uh, the, uh, what do we leave behind? I really would like to take the Prime Orcs with us. These guys are going to join in the offensive action we're about to take at Achnorion. Uh, you can actually go into Dol Guldur and act as a garrison, your free upkeep. You guys can join Camul's army. Uh, Lagren of the Neck, why don't you sit there? I really would like to have some kind of power at Dol Guldur if the Anduin Vale were to attack us here. Uh, so stay in there. With you inside, I'm feeling a lot more confident than if we were to just having these guys, for sure. Um... Ulyron, I also want you to keep on moving. Do not linger. Uh, we want you to link up with Camul as fast as you can. And Aglarakor is also going to join Camul's army. Okay. That's about it. We are getting the mines. Uh, we are recruiting some wargs here. Uh, Money-wise, we are starting to lose money. We have the army upkeep is pretty high now. Uh, no surprise, of course. Um... But we still have a fair few amount of cash left, so we shouldn't go into the negative just yet. Uh, spy, where are you? I can't find you. You're so scared. There we go. You're over there. Lothlorien reached. Kalas Galadar. They have quite the army here. Hitherbin already. That's a scary cav unit. Uh, quite that large army, actually. Uh, Lim here is over there. Haldir is inside. I think maybe Celeborn is inside there. He should be. And they should also have a region down here somewhere. I think they start with only these three regions. If you were to play as Lothorin, you would start with Karas Galadon and Limhir. But I do believe that the AI is getting this region, Eidrachan, I think it is called, as a auto expansion in turn two. So let's try and scout that region out as well so that we know exactly where it is. Uh, once again, we are just going to end the turn here because there's nothing more we can do. Uh, no, let's just take a look. Is there any interesting traits anymore? Anywhere we can read? No, he has the same. Lagrin did get a new one. Spider Ring. A ring handed out by Camul to only the most accomplished of generals. It signifies immense importance and responsibility. Yeah, that was that one. And Relic Sword as well. And one more thing. We should be able to get these spiders uh, as Dol Guldur. Are they from the Beast Cage? No, they're not. Are they from the regular barracks? Shadow's Calling, perhaps. Castles of Dol Guldur, Camels. There we go. Bla Great Black Spiders. We can get them. Six attack, seven charge, 23 total defense, two hit points. I mean,. They're not the best thing in the world, but they have a special attack, they're skilled against mounts, they're frightened nearby enemy. They have an okay charge, they can do a lot of work. They're pretty tough, so we're definitely going to try and recruit them when we can. Does it actually require 
the Shadow's Calling, or can we, get, can we get it from the Guard Barracks? No, we need the Shadow's Calling. And that one requires the Archery Range as well, so we need to get this one. Um, Goblin Headhunters, Stalkers, Scouts, Archers. And we are, we are actually getting the um, Shadow Rangers from this one as well. So this is a really high priority building to get because we're not getting these decent archers here. Um, we are getting the decent archers here and not at the archer range like I actually thought we would. Um, so that is a really important one to get. Alright, let's end the turn again and let's besiege Achnorion in the next one and get those two things thousand gold coins. I really would like to have them. We are going to need them because we actually are on our way to going into the negative and if we could have some spare cash to get some buildings uh, with I would be pretty happy. Let's take a look. Yeah, we're not losing too much. We're actually doing okay. Um, Aglaracor you're gonna join Kamul's army. I want you to lay siege. Two turns only. We are actually going to maintain. We're gonna wait them out. We're not gonna strike them. Uh, even though we have more than enough to do so. We are going to wait them out in order to, for Kamul to be useful. And uh, Aglarakor, you're also going to join Kamul's army. Lagran of the Neck, why don't you move into Dolguldur to try and... Did, how much money did you actually earn us there? Okay. About a hundred. That's okay. These wargs are also going to join Kamul's army. Uh, this is overkill in terms of how much units we have. In, but we are going to want to have this entire army when we move into Lothlorien lands. Try and see if we can scout this region. There we go. Eidrachan, it's really empty. They only have one general inside. Good. Uh, this is the next target for sure after I've taken Achnodion. Uh, we know it's over there. Let's move back. Let's try and stand somewhere over here. See if we can... So that we know if they send more forces. Ulairon, keep moving. Uh, since we're going aggressive here, we are likely going to... Need, if we are to fighting that doom stack that will spawn in from Lothlorien later, I really want to have Kamul, one of these Castellans as a tank, and a Lyron as well along with these archers, because all of these troops are going to help a lot. And remember, we can actually... Aglaracor can die, he is going to respawn. Kamul can die, he will re respawn as well. The sad thing if we lose Kamul is the fact that he's not going to be the faction leader anymore if he dies. And that is a thing I really want to try and keep him as the faction leader. Because I want him to have all of these traits here. And uh, all of the command and authority that comes with it. We also have a different kind of bodyguard as Dolgul do. We have the Mirkwood bodyguards. 12 attack, 18 defense. Missile attack of 9, which is effective against armor. They throw their axes at their opponents. I do believe that they're effective against armor as well in the melee. I mean, this is not the greatest bodyguard in the world. Absolutely not. But they can do some work with their throwing axes. They can absolutely crush at least one battalion of troops. And they're actually pretty good against elves. Or even dwarves. If you can get them to throw their axes at high armored targets. So they can be good in different kinds of situations. They can also be really bad because as a bodyguard, I mean the stat 12 attack, 8 in defense, that's pretty low. The attack is okay though, but the defense, oh, they're easily killed, easily dead. So, but really a nice bodyguard though. It's something different and I like that. I like that a lot. It's actually pretty nice to see. Uh, we're going to talk with Anduin Vale, of course. Let's not forget about that. Let's see if we can get a ceasefire. Very demanding. How about if we give you trade rights and even map info? Can we get that? No. It's not going to happen. As except that we will attack? No. They are not going to take it. They're not. Okay, let's leave them be. Uh, I don't feel too threatened here. They only have three units inside. I don't feel too threatened from the Anduin Vale just yet. If they start cl closing in, we can recruit some extra forces here. But for now I'm feeling confident. Shag Thrak. I want you to move up over here, try and talk to Gundabad and uh, maybe the goblins of Moria and 
the dwarves of Erebor. I don't think we're at war with them. No, let's try and get some trade rights and maybe sell some map information. Okay, I do believe that we have done everything we can. Uh, let's end the turn again. And of course, at Achnodion, we're just going to wait them out. We're not going to go in. Let them sally forth. Oh, Eidrachan has actually... They have actually sent in some forces in there. Interesting. Okay. They have reinforced it. So that means it's going to be a tougher fight there. In the next end turn, they are going to sally forth. And we are going to get two grand for that. Which is going to come in really handy. Diplomats! Keep your journey going. Move towards the lands of Gundabad and get some trade rights with them. Ulairon is on the way. He is soon there. Aglarakor is about to join Kamul's army. Get in there. Prepare for fighting. Uh, what have they got in here? They have some archers and some sentries. Okay, nothing scary. But these elves are going to get a lot of kills on us. This is a castle. This is a castle. So... If we are to attack in this place, we are going to take a lot of losses because the towers in Divide and Conquer are insanely overpowered. So we need to keep that in mind. But we are going to strike them. We are going to attack them. We are going to just go in there and try and berserk our way through. Uh, we're not going to just linger and wait them out or something. Uh, I want to take the fun way. Even It's the hard way, but it's the fun way to attack them straight on and maybe risk losing a fair few orcs. My losses are easily replenished, um, except if we were to lose the Narskulls, it's going to take some time to replenish those guys. But all of these orcs are easily replenished. Go back over here a little bit. Well, it looks like they have a pretty solid garrison inside, but nothing that seems to be on the way to this area. One thing to note though, if we take Eidrachan, we are going to border Rohan, hopefully. They are going to be preoccupied with Isengard. I really hope that they're not going to focus on me if we border them. If they're going to focus me, we have to quicken up the process with Lothlorien even more. Um, they're not even at war with each other yet. Hopefully they're going to start fighting each other. It shouldn't take too long. They usually start fighting each other really quickly in the campaigns. Okay, yeah, you're on your way. Good, let's end the turn again because there's nothing more we can do. And let's see if they sally forth. They should do that. They should. The reason why I'm not charging into Achnurion is because I want to keep my numbers in my army as high as possible for the eventual attack of Eidrachan. We need those numbers to be high when we fight there because of the bloody castle towers. There we go, Captain Freavin is sallying out to meet me on the field, and he doesn't stand a chance whatsoever. Lord Camul is leading quite the mighty force here, so no, sorry lad, there's no way for you to win today. We're about to smash your phases in. Let's go in with Camul. The first fight of the campaign against some rebels shouldn't be a problematic fight at all. Let's go. Let's have a little look at Kamul himself, because they have changed the look of this guy. Look at that new model for him. Look at the maze he is wielding. Look at that. He looks insanely mighty now. This is a really huge upgrade to the looks of the faction leader of Dol Guldur, Kamul. The helmets, everything looks so great. He looks so badass. And he's our faction leader, that feels great. I'm feeling confident with that kind of faction leader. I absolutely am. Send forth the archers. Let's group them up quickly. Send them forth, start harassing them. I'm not going to use my poor orcs in this fight. I'm going to try and use my archers, maybe the javelins, and then Aglarakor. Aglarakor, if they get too close, Aglarakor is going to try and fight them. Javelins, you're going to join the fight as well. And Kamul, of course, is going to try and charge them. From the side here. Let's move over there with him. Try and take away the skirmish mode. I can't quite remember. Is Dol Guldur going to receive... Are they receiving any armor upgrades when you upgrade it? One thing to note as well is the fact that Dol Guldur can only get 
to the third uh, blacksmith. We can only get blacksmith and nothing more. That's really poor. But we're just going to have to live with that. The armor upgrades of these factions are not that great. But I do wonder if they get any visual upgrades. Would like to know. I can't quite remember if they did. There we go. We're harassing the, the cell swords here. Some bandit cell swords. They have some archers. Woodman hunters. Uh, what's their stats? I think they're quite decent in the missile. Overall stats. Insanely poor. Except the missile attack. Missile attack of 4 is actually really good. In this starting um, starting turns of the campaign. That's a really decent attack. And if they are about to fire back at me. They're actually going to do some harm. Don't want that. And if you could spread out a little bit. It would be pretty nice if you could. Uh, I'm actually going to start moving in with uh, the Castellans here. Look at the Castellans. A mighty mighty unit here. The Nazgul commander there and the Castellans. They look real cool. I think this is likely the coolest unit of... One of the coolest units of the Dol Guldur roster. I like the Kamul Shadow Rangers and Guards. And of course uh, the Shadow Knights. Yeah, they come. Bandits and uh, Cell Swords are going in against the Castellans. That's okay. That's a good, good fight for you. They're firing at me with their archers. Uh, fire the Bandits. Cav. Why don't you go and silence the Woodman Hunters? Where's my javelin over there? They are shaken. They're actually wavering already. If you pop the ability, we might even break them. Yes, we did. We, they're broken. Good. <laughs> they are already broken. Wonderful. And, yeah, you're firing at the bandits. Feel free to fire at the bandits. That's okay. Keep weakening them. Don't let them return for now. And javelins, why don't you position yourself over there? Uh, enemy general. Whew. Almost thought we did lose a Glaracor there for a second. That would suck if that were the case. Javelins. Oh, we have already won the battle. Okay, that went really easy. <laughs> Just like that, the battle is over. It went a lot quicker than I thought. Look at the slaughter. The Castellans have plowed everything in their path. Look at that. The Cell Sword guy is already de defeated. Well, the morale shock from us killing the general that swiftly made them break pretty fast. End of the battle. Well, it was 13 orcs. That's okay. That's an okay fight, for sure. Kill-wise, uh, nothing much really. The Merkwood Hunters, 40 kills, and the Castellans of Tolguldur. So, a shared first place in terms of the kills. I would be a little bit ashamed if I were the Castellans of Tolguldur. Uh, sharing the first place with the Merkwood Hunters. But the Merkwood Hunters don't underestimate them. They're actually pretty good. They have high numbers, two missile attack, but they have poison arrows that they shoot with. So, I mean, Merkwood Hunters, they're actually pretty good. They're far better than these guys, the Merkwood uh, Goblins. Uh, they are. They have some really good use. Uh, so, don't underestimate them. But there we go. First battle of the campaign has been won. A really easy one. Nothing challenging going on here. Look at these units. Look at the Camel Shadow Knights. They look so cool. Look at the detail. Look at the detail on the shield and the helmet. They look insane. One of the coolest units in the entire game, actually. Look at that. Yeah. Good victory. First region claimed of the campaign. We now have two settlements. Occupy the region. There we go. Good. Glorious news. And, of course, we gained the two grand extra from taking this one. So, really good. Really, really good. We are still losing money, but we're not losing too much. This is actually going to give us some extra money with us taking Achnorion. Let's take a look. On my upkeep, we are still losing, but not too much anymore. We're not losing so much. Um, so that is great. And Achnorion, let's take a look at this region. 40% uh, culture. We don't need to rush the Shrine of Melkor then. Uh, because we have this, uh, this culture already. So I think we are actually going to try and get the building ground first. And then maybe the slave pit 
to get the free upkeep and the recruitment slots and even the hunters and goblins here. Um, this is going to be the next building and then after that we can maybe go for the Shrine of Melkor. But the Shrine of Melkor is not that important just instantly to get. Um, there we go. First region grabbed in the campaign. I feel good about that. And of course before we move on out further I really want to try and watchtower up this region. Uh, the mines are done in two tasks. That should actually nullify uh, the losses we're taking almost. Uh, which is great. It's really great. Spy, move up over here. Uh, once again, Halder is in there. Is Celeborn inside of Karas Galadon? He should be. He is inside of Karas Galadon. Celeborn, that's good to know. Or oh, are they actually having this region as well? Lower Gladden. Yes, they do. So they actually have four regions. Is this an outer expansion? It should be this region here. That should is that an outer expansion region? Right. Let's take a look at that. They could have grabbed that as well. Right so Lothlorien actually has four regions in their control at the moment. Uh, it matters not though because we're still just going to take this castle here, so it really doesn't matter. Ulyron, why don't you move over there? Bring me some vision. And uh, Aglaracor, give me a tower on the border there. Move back. Kamul, I want you to tower up everything else. There we go. Good. Some vision. And bring me some vision over there. Can we go for low just for a turn? 65. Okay, I really shouldn't have gotten him out of there. They're going to rebel for a turn then. Get the guys out. They're, they're going to have to rebel for one turn. We don't want our guys to be damaged. Uh, they can only damage the land clearance, so it's no big deal if they are to rebelling for one turn. Let them rebel for a turn. It doesn't really matter too much. He's going to return back in there to keep the peace later. Uh, Diplomat, how is it going for you with your journey? You are on your way. Keep moving. Keep moving. Let's actually take a look at the faction information as well. We haven't done that yet. The stronghold of Sauron in, in, in the Mirkwood. Dol Guldur, the hill of sorcery, stands as a bastion for the dark powers in the forest and is commanded by Camul the Easterling, led by three Nazgûls. It can call, call upon a host of dark powers, from orcs to wargs, spiders, black Easterlings and even the un undead castellans of Dol Guldur. With sorcerers and martial powers alike, Camul the Easterling strives to execute his master's campaign in the north. Culture, Shadow of Mel Melkor, of course, we know that. Special feature, the Nazgul. In service of Tomordor are the fell and foul Nazgul. Foreign kings and sorcerers, Sauron has dispatched three Nazgul to Dol Guldur, led by Camul the Easterling. As long as Dol Guldur holds Dol Guldur, the Nazgul will return and respawn there if they are slain, like I told you before. This is a really powerful thing, because the Nazguls are insanely powerful. Building limitations. Dol Guldur has no building limitations and has full access to all settlement tiers. Dol Guldur also has regular access to level 1 to 3 armor from blacksmiths. Yeah, so blacksmithing is not the best thing in the world for us. The ring script. Dol Guldur can either return the ring to Mordor by capturing the settlement um, the one ring has been found in and sending the general with it to the Moranon, or they can betray and forsake Mordor and chose to keep the ring for themselves. We're not going to gain the Nazgul's if we do that path, I don't think. Because we don't have a Maya lord as Dol Guldur. So I'm not sure, what, are we going to lose the Nazgul's if we do that or not? I, we're not going to do that. Uh, we're not going to touch the ring at all. Uh, we're not. Uh, well then. Did, do we have, did we get a new mission? No, we, no, we have no mission. Okay. Uh, well, there's nothing more we can do in this turn. Let's end the turn again. Yeah, they are rebelling for a turn. That's totally fine. Let them do that. As long as they don't murder some some of my troops i'm happy that's the thing we really want to try and avoid no unnecessary casualties i'm playing a bit uh, defensive here with with my orcs 
Um, I don't want to lose them. Even though we are going to take insane losses when we strike the castle. I'm not going to wait them out here. I want to strike them. I just want to go in and have a cinematic clash at Eidrachan. But if we do that path, which is the fun path, we are going to take a lot of losses from the towers and against the troops that they have inside. That's just how it is. So, even though I'm playing a bit safe with my orcs now, just you wait, because we are about to lose a lot of my orcs soon. Go back inside, you're gonna move back inside. Uh, they're happy here again. Go for low. They didn't damage the land clearance. This one is done in one turn. Really want to try and get this one for the extra bonus to law there, to keep them happy. Camel, move to the border, bring me a tower there, good. We have some solid vision. And uh, why don't you get a tower there as well. Oh look at that, they have an army there. An archer and something else. Get a tower there. If they attack us I think we, were, we, are, we should win with him. Because these archers are better than this archer. Uh, 180 meter range, they have the same missile attack, 20 missiles, let's take a look and compare, 215 meter range and 32 missiles, these guys are so much better. Oh, and they can play stakes as well, and we have one. The generals won't be able to play stakes, but this unit will be able to place the stakes. So we can actually play stakes already. This is a cool unit, the Camul Shadow Rangers. Wait there, I'm just gonna double check here. Can we move out? Let's just take a look. 70%. We can actually move out. It's not going to rebel even further. But I think we should wait at least one more turn. Before we do anything. Uh, and win well. They have recruited some more forces here. By the looks of it. They have some hobbits there. Some store sheriffs. And some woodman warriors. Maybe we would actually benefit from getting something more here. Not just the Narskull and these pathetic orcs. We need something better. Maybe some archers. Dolgulur archers. Yeah. I mean, 3-5. They're even better in melee than the Mirkwood goblins. So let's get one unit of Dolgulur archers as well here. To strengthen up the defenses at Dolguldur. Financial 26. We're real not up. Oh, pop overall 25. Population 16. Production 18. Production and population, we're actually pretty decent in considering our size. Diplomats. Yeah, what do we have here? Anduin Vale, okay, ignore those guys. Try and move for for Gundabad. I really want to try and talk to them. I do believe that we are allied to them. Doesn't look like we have trade rights. No, we do not. We have trade rights with Mordor. But good and bad, we only have an alliance, nothing more. Reputation, very untrustworthy. <laughs> okay, that's not good. Okay, let's end a turn again. Uh, Camul, I'm going to start moving you as well. Get on the move. Bulairon, stand here. You can actually stand on the river. Stand over there. If they go, go and attack you, you should be fine. As long as they don't send all of these guys out. One turn for the mines as well. There we go. Erui is over there. They've taken that. Maybe that is actually going to be the region that we claim last from Lothlorien. I'm thinking that it is going to be the last region we claim. The most difficult things when fighting Lothlorien is for sure going to be taking Karas Galadon and to fight the Doomstack. Because we are going to fight the Doomstack. Goblins of Moria, you will receive a reward of 750 gold coins. Absolutely. Let's talk to the Goblins of Moria. Uh, there we go. He's over there. Let's talk to him. Trade rights. Yes. Uh, can we offer some map information for... F we only have two regions. 400 gold coins. Yes. Good. That's a good amount of money we got from that. Alliance, maybe? No. Annoyed? Why are you annoyed? Move for Gundabad. Mission success. 750 gold coins in our coffers. Exactly what we needed. Construct report. Dol Guldur has gotten the mines. Go for the building grounds now. And uh, Achnorion. 
have gotten the building grounds, let's go for the slave pit to bolster the bonus to law here. Let's see if we can leave behind just one unit now. It was at 70% the last time. It's at blue. So that is fine. We are also going to get 5% extra with us. Uh, moving into the army. There we go. We are going to get 5% uh, extra when this one has been completed as well. So we should be fine at Achnodion now. Dolguldur Archers has been recruited at Dolguldur itself. Now I'm feeling a lot more confident that we should be able to defend there with those extra archers. I, I, the Castellans are really what is making me confident that we are going to survive if the Anduin Vale were to attack us. If they're sending a larger force, um, then I hope that they do. I'm hoping if they send a force that it might be this big, like this one here. But if they send something really big, we are going to have to try and recruit everything we can. Uh, we should be warned. They shouldn't have the movement points to reach us from the fog of war all the way to Dol Guldur. So we should be warned if they try and strike us and then we could recruit a bunch of extra troops in one turn. And that should bolster our defenses even more. We could of course go for the militia garrison but that's pretty damn expensive at the moment. I really don't want to go for that just now. Okay, diplomats head on over to Gundabad as I've said, and spy, you did show me, they have the Lothlorn March Wardens over there, that's a scary unit to face this early. Eight missile attack, should be easily neutralized with Camul's Shadow Knights though, but if they get to shoot their arrows, they're gonna do devastating damage to my orcs, absolutely. Um, that's a powerful archer right there. Gornag, move back. Uh, we want you back to this area, so that we can see if they're about to send more armies this way. Stand somewhere around there. Good. And let's besiege Eidrachan in the next turn. They have five units inside. That's a lot. That's a lot more than I kind of want them to have. The elves are tough to take down, especially when they're defending a castle. We should pre be prepared for losses. Let's end the turn. Oh, there's some really interesting situations that might happen if we console command destroy Mordor. Gondor is likely, it's not a certain fact, but it's likely that Gondor is going to become a powerhouse. It depends a little bit if Khan chooses to stay with the good or the bad. But uh, Gondor should surely earn a lot of extra things if, <laughs> if we destroy Mordor. Uh, if we destroy them, Gondor's likely going to take all of these territories here, maybe even some territories inside here. Maybe Rune and Kand might grab some things here as well. Dorwinion could even go down here and take a region if they're lucky. Um, yeah, the, the entire balance of this entire area is going to be totally out of the window. And um, it is not going to benefit me. Absolutely not. What do we have here? Lorien Warders, they are not going to be able to reach uh, Ach Nord Ion. Let's see, I think if we take this army, we, we have one turn to play with. How much money are we going to lose if we take you out? Not too much. The Anduin Vale doesn't have an army nearby. Stand over here for a turn. Um, and be prepared um, because if we attack this army, we are going to attack this army, try and bring it down and then lay siege to Eidrachan. If this army is still going for Achnodion, then maybe we need to send uh, Chieftain Lagoran inside here for just a turn to make sure that they don't take Achnodion. So he's going to stay there for one turn and wait and hide and see what they do they go closer um, because with him inside of Achnodion we are going to be able to crush these spears without any major issues whatsoever uh, can you attack this guy he's falling back it matters not because we are going to crush him 
hard. Well, we are actually going to be able to get some more troops in one turn as well here. We are going to be able to get the hunters and the goblins from this one. So we could bolster our ranks here with two additional soul uh, battalions. Uh, let's see what he what this army is going to do. He's standing on the ready if something bad happens. Can we get any mercenaries here? No, no mercenaries. Get ready for uh, the first battle with Lothlorien is about to unfold. We're catching them off guard here. Captain Seberlandon or Keberlandon is bringing with him two units of archers, two Lorien archers, and one Gerdinen. What I want to try and do here is to try and minimize our casualties as well. We want to try and move in with Camul and maybe the Wargs, try and neutralize these archers, and then pepper the Gerdinen down with archer fire. That is what I'm thinking. I'm a bit scared of using the wargs against the Gurdin and I mean Camulla would probably just destroy these guys with ease. But they're pretty okay, they're pretty okay melee units. Frightened nearby enemy infantry. 14 attack, 15 defense. I mean they would likely do some solid damage to my horses. So if we can, ideally, I kind of want to try and pepper them down with all of my poison arrows that I do have. We have the Camul Shadow Rangers with us as well this time, so... The Gurdinen shouldn't be a problem. They have six defense because nine is in defense skill. So they should be easily brought down with archers. Let's go in and let's destroy the first Lothlorien army. Let's destroy some else. And let's not try and use our melee forces in this fight at all. Save the lives of these guys. We're going to need them later. The javelins are not going to be used either. The archers will be used group them up like that and the cab castellans you can actually stay kind of nearby if you need if you're needed but the things we are going to need are the archers and the cab for this fight try and spread them out a bit okay start the battle we have something over there archers yeah they have some archers over there and the Gardenen is moving up. The long, Okay, let's start moving up. Uh, archers, you can slowly but surely walk forwards. Slowly. Wargs, take a flank. Camel Shadow Knights, take a flank. Look at the archers, they're really fast. They're so fast. Let's see if we can just charge through them. I really don't want them to be inside of the Gardenen unit when we do strike them. I'm actually going to set you guys... No, not yet. We don't want to fire on our own cab if they're inside of each other. Okay, let's take a look and see if we can get these charges off. The general, where's the general? Is he in this unit? I think he's in this unit. Okay, you've gone a little bit too far. Go after the archers. Stop them. We don't want them to fire at us. Not a single volley, ideally. You can start focusing down the gardener now. Don't let them fire. We want to just annihilate them. There we go. They're stopping. Come on. Stop them before they can fire. Good charge. Don't fire yet. Oh, don't get caught there. They are likely going to do a lot of damage to you. The Gurdon, get out. Don't want to risk losing your Nazgul yet. He's going to respawn, so it doesn't really matter too much, but uh, we need him to be our faction leader. Now, bring in some volleys quickly, while we're moving away. Good charges. We just charge them all down there. That's pretty good. Okay, let's take a look. We want you to focus the Gerdinen. Archers. Where's the Gerdinen? Ah, oh, lord. Can't even... There we go, it's over there. Okay, good. Charge the archers again. Let the Gerdinen move away from their archers. So that my archers can just bombard the Gerdinen down. While my cab totally deletes their archers. Stop firing just for a second. While we move in with our cab here. Oh, this is not going to end well for them. Let's do a pop of the abilities. Just before. Let's pop the Serpent Alexa as well. There we go. This is going to be devastating for them. Oh, they're likely going to break from this. Yes, there we go. They're totally sandwiched here by my cab. They're getting shredded. And now my archers are going to fire everything they have. They are shaken. Let's see if we can even bring them down without them even attacking us. 
I'm not sure they are. They have a pretty okay morale. Camel, get in there. Archers, move away quickly before they reach you. They have a really high speed, though, these Gerdinand. So, try and get there. Of course, I would really want to take a look at uh, this guy, the general, if we can even find him. Because, uh, is this him? No, that's... Oh, he's over there. We're going to take a look at him later. Unpause. Stand over there. I want to see the general model there of that unit. They're wavering. They're likely going to break instantly here. There we go. Continue the battle. Kill them all. Let's take a look at Ulyron's model here. There he is. Oh, look at that. Such a badass guy. Look at the armor. Look at the shield. Look at the sword. Yeah, it's a really cool custom general, this one. It's a bit sad that we don't get some more of these uh, men from the east. We only have one general from the east. Would be pretty cool with some more. Or maybe a script that so that you can get even more of these generals. Maybe a script um, if you take a settlement or two or something, a specific one, you get another easterling general. And this time this easterling general comes equipped with the, the look... Um, uh, Flagrim or Gamprim or even the Dragon Wraths uh, Guildsmen or something like that. That would be really cool if they added some kind of script. Uh, but instead of having the gold general look, this the, the Eastern general has this uniform. That would be a cool thing if they could add that. It's not an important thing to add, but it would be a cool thing. Some side, a little side quest for Dol Guldur. Have we killed everyone? I think we have. Yes, we did. Five losses, that's okay. Shadow Knight, 116 kills. Uh, Shadow Rangers, six. Hunters, 18. Archers, nine. And the other Archers, nine kills. And the Wargs, 126. I mean, the Wargs are really good. They're the only cab we can recruit at the moment. And they can actually do a fair bit of damage. So don't underestimate the Wargs either. They're, they're really useful. They really are. Good victory. Five losses. And um, we've destroyed some more elves. Let's move for Eidrachar now. Great work. Mercy, Execute them all. Good. We now have a clear path towards Eidrachar. It looks like they took some of their um, garrison inside of Eidrachar and moved over here. So they don't have nearly as many troops. They only have two units now instead of five. It's really good that we got to destroy them here outside. Really happy about that. Let's lay siege to Eidra Khan. Go for a ram. Go for some ladders. Go for a siege tower. Go for two siege towers. There we go. That should be enough. Uh, can we see what they have? One general and something more. Likely um, some sentries or some space or something. Where's my spy? He is over there. Do they have anything on the way? Mm, they have one army here, but they are not going to be able to reach us. Some archers and something more. Uh, no thing, nothing that we really need to worry about. Um, good. Eidrachan should be ours soon. Lord Camogil the Easterling, menacing Uruk. This Uruk is sure to put fear into the frail hearts of your enemies. And perhaps a large sword as well. One troop morale, three looting. Uh, <laughs> maybe we should... Um, Actually, give this one to one of our Uruk-ka, Uruk generals that we, we are going to get later instead. I think we are. <laughs> this is... Uh, no, he shouldn't have this retinue. I, I'd rather... We are going to try and give it to... Whenever we can get an actual Mirkwood bodyguard, we're going to give that retinue to that general. Because it fits far better than him having menacing Uruk. It doesn't fit. Okay. Uh, Captain Feridir, let's see what you're gonna, what you're about to do. Diplat, let's move you towards yes. Gundabad, and let us end the turn again. Let's see what happens. Let's see how much money we're gonna have. We are gonna lose a little bit of extra money now with the Nazgul general not being inside of Dol Guldur. Uh, but I hope we have enough money so that we can afford the next tier. Building reduction building out of carpenter's uh, house. Um, 
2776. Can we afford that? We can afford it. Perfect. I really wanted to start that one. Good. Let's start that one in Dolguldur. Because Dolguldur is where we get the most value of our buildings. I think this was the army that stood here. I think it was. They could be hit, but I think this was the army. Look at that! Look at that army! Two Lothlorien March Wardens, warder, Warders, Sentries, two Hitherbin. Um, I think we should be fine. We should be able to send him back to Dol Guldur. It's going to make us earn a little bit more money. These Mirkwood Hunters... Should we send them here, or should they stay? I mean, the Andaman Whale might still do something against me. So, save them there for now. I think Echnodion is fine. We are out of money, so we cannot go for the next building. But we have gotten the things that I really wanted to get. The building ground and the slave pits at Echnodion. Uh, the next building we should try and get is going to be the Shrine of Melkor. And one thing that we really should try and start getting as well are the blacksmiths. We can only get to the third tier, but I mean, I think that uh, the Dolguldur archers can upgrade one time, these guys can upgrade two times, these guys can only upgrade one time, I th can these guys upgrade? They can actually upgrade one time as well. So I mean, it's beneficial, it's going to strengthen our forces a fair bit. I think these guys can upgrade even three times. I mean, two attack, five defense. That's going to be a huge boost to the Mirkwood Goblins. I mean, they would actually be a little bit more valuable for us if we give them the Blacksmith. So one thing we should actually try and get pretty fast here is the highest tier Blacksmith. It's going to help our poor Orcs fight a little bit better in the wars. Yeah, the Chainmail, so... Yeah, this is actually a really... Even though we can only go, go to the third tier, it's still really good for us to get the blacksmith. We did get a mission to talk to the high elves. I don't think there's a way for us to reach... No, we're not going to reach them. Go and talk to Gundabad. We can talk to the high elves later. Let's talk to Gundabad. Continuing tomorrow. End of turn report. Let's take a look at the financial situation. 2,750 gold coins in construction. No, it's over there. 2,762 in construction. King's Pass is pretty good. Army upkeep is high. We are losing a fair, fair bit of money. Um, nothing major though. N not a big... We are going to start making money when we take Eidrachan. And we can take it. They have some sentries and their bodyguard, Elbereth Sentinels. So, we are just going to storm through. We are going to take... I mean, if we were to out-resolve this one, we would likely fare a lot better than if we went in fighting this fight. But I'm not going to out-resolve. I'm going to fight the fight and just attack them, even though they have their towers. It's a more fun fight to watch and to play as well. But we're not going to do that in this episode. We're going to begin the next episode by taking Eidrachan. I really hope that you've enjoyed this first episode as much as I have enjoyed it. I have enjoyed it a lot. And once again, let me know what you want me to do. Um, the answers from you guys are going to be the key factor to what I do at the beginning of the next episode. Do we want me to console command destroy Mordor? We're not going to get any benefits from it. Not even the Nazguls. They're not going to come to us. We're not going to get anything for it. It's just going to make the campaign a lot harder. Because we're going to have more enemies. So console command. Destroy Mordor. And have a harder campaign. Or play Dol Guldur Just standard. The standard way. It's up to you guys. I hope you have a beautiful day. Goodbye. To you all.